Hello everybody, it's Alex again with RDO Equipment out of Moorhead, Minnesota. Wanted to uh, show you a couple tractors that we just got done building and this whole conversation is going to be, well, just that, more of a conversation piece. I don't have a script, I'm just talking off the top of my dome and I want to tell you guys about these two particular tractors. What we have behind me is two 4066R machines. They are 2023 units. So they, they are not the My24s with the heavy duty front axle and the new EH hitch that you'll see on the 4075, 66, and 52R, which I do have a couple of 75Rs here. Hopefully do that on a different time, different video, kind of walk around those. Tractor Time with Tim has got a really good video on the 4075R. I encourage you to go check that out. Uh, he does a fan fantastic job talking about the updates on the 3R and the 4R in that unit. Um, so if I get around to it, I don't see the necess necessity for me to do a video like that, but maybe I'll get it done. So the 23 4066Rs are behind me. You can see I got front snowblowers on them. You might be familiar with the new SB, whatever, I'll put it in the comments right here below in the video, that model number, but Frontier from Deer, you might've seen it out at Equip Expo in Louisville on display, uh, the new Frontier front mount snowblower. That uses a, a drop box, right? On the rear PTO, subframe mounted, long PTO shaft underneath the machine to drive that front snowboard. okay? Um, while with the Frontier unit uh, that you saw there at Equip Expo in Louisville, you can still use your rear three points, so that's fantastic. There are some other companies that make a similar product that ties up the whole rear end so you can't do anything on the back of the tractor. So it was nice to see that. But this here is the front Zyberg that's driving these two Chronobos snowblowers. And I'll talk more about the blowers a little bit later. But uh, the front Zyberg kit is what we opted to use on these tractors. The front three-point PTO kit, it is extensive surgery to install, but it is extremely nice. And the PTO was driven off the front crankshaft of the engine. And you got a separate PTO switch in there um, on your right-hand console that will turn that, that PTO on. And then you'll have, of course, a separate PTO switch with the factory John Deere PTO switch for your, your rear PTO. So I'll walk around on the side of the track here and I'll show you this Zyberg hitch, but, and I'll, I'll walk through each piece and what, what we did here and what's a little bit different about both these tractors. Um, but the, the guts of this project is a 4066R from John Deere, Chronobos PXPL, and a Zyberg front three point PTO kit. And then one of these two tractors has a rear Metal Plus EX4 Extend Max on the back end. Both these tractors are geared towards the commercial operator that is doing a lot of driveway. Okay. This tractor could also be used possibly depending on everybody's situation is different. What everybody likes is different. So these two tractors are sold. And these are sold to uh, one, a new customer of a 4R with a front blower, and two, a returning customer that's already got one of these setups from me uh, with a front PXPL on it. And absolutely loves it. So again, everybody's different. I put some posts out there on, on these two tractors on a couple different uh, social media uh, groups, if you will. And there's, you know, some really good feedback. And then there's some guys that were saying that, oh, it wasn't so, wasn't, wasn't so good. And, you know, it just wasn't for them, right? And that's okay. Everybody's got a different opinion. And I encourage those conversations, uh, but I truly believe that these two setups are really quite effective. Let's just get into it. Let's just start the walk around, okay? So we got the Pronovos PXPL 80 on this machine. Now, this is the smallest PXPL that Pronovos makes. What's special about this blower is it's, as it is right now, a conventional type snowblower. You can blow your way into the driveway, and then when you get, get to the end of the driveway or up against the garage door, this gate here then will drop down, and you can see it on the other snowblower, that gate being dropped down. And that allows you then to back drag out of that driveway or away from that building uh, while scraping up some snow as well and cleaning up some remnants, if you will. Okay, that's what makes this snowblower so darn special. Now, I don't, I don't sell junk, I don't build junk. I like selling some really nice equipment. And so I don't do anything just standard. And so when I order these in from Pronovos, here's what I'm getting. Okay, I'm just going to go through order codes. I got a sheet here. I'm getting my hose kit already factory installed from Pronovos, so I don't have to do anything with it. That saves me time and money 
in the shop, okay? I'm doing a Hardox 450 impeller housing. What that means, this impeller housing right here, just this chunk of steel, it's Hardox 450. It's gonna give you the best possible wear life out of that housing if you get into, let's say some rocks, gravel, which you never really wanna throw down a snowblower's throat. Nonetheless, it does happen, right? So Hardox 450 housing, obviously we painted it green. Kronobos' default color is red. Well, we like things to look nice here at RDO, so we're gonna paint it green. I do the Hardox 450 cutting edge and skid shoes. And so that's where you can see the color indicator here. It's not just green and yellow for, for John Deere. It actually worked out really well this way, but what Pornobos does is when you see the yellow color, that is Hardox 450. That's their way of labeling it. So it works, works out really nice in our favor, right? So we had a Hardox 450 cutting edge down here, okay? We did the Hardox 450 up top on the drop gate and the Hardox 450 cutting shoes on the gate and on the snowboard as well on the side you'll be able to see them another update on this machine that we did was the semi-industrial chute so you'll notice that this is a triple hinged chute what that allows us to do and i'll show you this in an operational video showing it running but allows you to basically recycle that snow you can bend this down and darn near do a 180 degree turn and dump it straight down on the ground right in front of the snowboard or recycle it that comes in handy in, in those tight areas where you need to move snow a little bit further away. You really don't have a spot to blow it. So recycling it becomes the best effective way to get away from a building or away from a spot. So then you can open up the chute and deflect that snow way out there and get it, get it out where you need it to be. Um, one thing I want to make, uh, make known is I do have a contractor that's got one of these on his 4R and he prefers Tyvar. So one, one thing about, you know, steel versus tie bar or, you know, H&W plastic, if you will, is that that tie bar is going to be a lot more gentle on a driveway. So if you have something that's stamped or like a, or a paver block that you're moving snow on, um, which paver block, this would be a little bit heavy, heavy for a paver block, but that tie bar would, would not scratch the driveway, whereas this potentially could. Uh, while this has got the best wear life on it, tie bar is an option. So I want you to be aware that it is out there that you can do like say Hardox 450 on the cutting edge of the main door, then just on this drop gate, maybe do tie bar so, as an option. So then we'll get into the to the Zyberg hitch here. Um, nothing crazy um, other than it is really cool looking, right? I'm sure you've all heard of it. I'm going to actually find my sheet that shows me my order codes on this Zyberg. So we have the front PTO and the, the, the front three point. The PTO on this is a 540 clockwise rotation, okay? So I want to make something very clear to, you, to everybody out there in the YouTube world that's, that's into these tractors. John Deere, if you're a dealer and you talk to your dealer, they're going to say, well, there's a, there's a three-point kit out there uh, for, for a John Deere 4R series tractor that we can get here in the United States right now today. Yes, that is, that is a fact. That is true. It is actually a modular kit. It's got two sides and a front that bolt together on the front nose of the tractor. Okay, and then you got your three-point links that are essentially the same three-point links you see here. They're just painted green and not black. The Zyberg front three-point kit is actually all welded together, so it slips on like a like a glove, if you will, on the front nose. Then we bolt it in into the side of the frame. You actually got to cut some of the frame to put this kit in. This kit takes about 28 hours to install. Okay, if you get really good at it, you can of course shorten that timeline. But I'm accruing 28 hours to put this in. That's with PTO as well. Okay. Now the PTO kit on this, like I said before, it's 540 clockwise rotation. Okay. That's clockwise as you're looking at it. Okay. So counterclockwise as you're sitting in the seat. Why is that important? It's important because most of our blowers that go on the back of a, or all our blowers that go on the back of a tractor are back of 540 clockwise as you're looking at it. So therefore we can take any blower that goes in the back of a tractor on a three point and put it on the front of this tractor. Okay, might do some slight modification to the front three point, cut the PTO shaft, it can be done. Okay, now your dealer's gonna say, well, there's a uh, PTO kit available for this tractor from Deere. That is true, it's only available in Europe though. And guess what, it, it follows the European standard of counterclockwise, and it's small 1000, okay? So what does that mean? If Deere ever releases that in the States, that means we have to have a counterclockwise gearbox that isn't cheap to do on most snowblowers. 
And when you order that snowblower for the counterclockwise gearbox from Deer, it's going to be small 1000. That, that blower, that combination, you're married to it now. Whereas something like this, if the customer wants to change out the blower or sell the blower or sell just the tractor, that's fine. This blower can go away. If the next customer that buys it only would have to buy a different drive shaft, because I about guarantee you the drive shaft on this is too short to go in the back of the tractor. So with these with this setup, effectively what we can do is if something happens to the front PTO on this tractor, my customer that has this setup can just come in a dealership, get a longer PTO shaft. We can cut it real quick and throw this blower on the back of the tractor and he's out moving snow again. We don't have a dedicated blower for the dedicated front on a small 1000 counterclockwise rotation. Okay, so another piece of this puzzle is the clean hydraulics. You might have seen some videos out there of, of this blower before. I know there's one that uh, an old employee of ours took, took a video of a, a good customer of ours up north. And uh, that, that tractor, that setup, again, it was an early rendition. We were all learning. We're always getting better. I'm always wanting to get better. And so are we as RDO equipment. Always want to get better. So this is the cleanest rendition that we've ever done of this kit. The old kit had hydraulic lines strung back and forth, and it just didn't look very good. So, and I'm a neat freak and a little touch OCD. But anyway, so all, all these hoses, all up front. We have auxiliary kits up front so we can just plug right in. Okay, we're not stringing, we're not extending these hoses and stringing them and zip tie them to the back. It is nice and clean. It's tight, tucked into the tractor. Amazing setup. I've had countless, countless comments on these as people had seen them come in and out of the store, customers, um, employees of RDO that have seen this. Ain't. That is just incredibly clean and it really is. When you see it in person, it's fantastic. I can't shout out, shout out to the amazing team and the technicians that we got working here. I, I get these ideas in my head and I say, here's what I want it to look like. Here's how I want it to function. And we continue to bounce ideas back and forth. And those technicians, you know what? They just nail it. They make it happen for us. And it, it's kudos to the, to the amazing team here at RDO. So you can see how, how nice and tight along the frame these hydraulic lines are. And that's, that's both sides. You know, you're not stringing hydraulic lines underneath the tractor potentially get them caught ripped off in the middle of the night three in the morning now you're upset because you're down just just a nice clean nice clean setup if you are a dealer out there listening to this video i do have some part numbers for you to help you do this particular setup with hydraulically on this pxpl okay what you're going to want to do now we'll get the other side on this but there is a accumulator for the front of this machine rdo fashion we love our accumulators so we're going to do a front accumulator on this one as well to help that balance going down the road but there is a small accumulator that order that is a zyberg accumulator it's not has deer or rdo has nothing to do with it it isn't a zyberg accumulator okay then i've got the lowering speed control set which i am told is the first two in the states they had to ship them over from overseas to me and and i'll show you that as well on the side it just helps regulate that lowering speed control set these are look guys these are heavy blowers okay the front axle, the front uh, hitch, the Zyber can handle it, but they're heavy blowers. And so we want to control that speed going down. We don't want it to just drop like a ton of bricks and either crack cement or hurt somebody's driveway. So we want to feather that down, right? So we got that lowering speed control set on here from Zyberg. We can feather these down, you know, um, as slow as we really want, okay? And then, uh, then, of course, we got the front hydraulic remotes. Now, I forget, the, I don't have the code number here, but there is a kit for one set of front hydraulic remotes, okay? And then John Deere has got two kits, and I'll give you those part numbers, because I know I do have those here. So, one of these is the remote kit from Zyberg. The other two is Deere kit. Now, the first kit, you're gonna have to do the first hydraulic coupler kit number one is how it's labeled, and it's BLV10990, okay? Then if you need the other function up front, it's going to be hydraulic coupler kit number two, and it's BLV10991, okay? So that is how we achieve this nice, clean look up here, all righty? And of course, you know, you guys can find on YouTube, we did another video on, you know, what makes a snow tractor snow tractor, right? We got the, I don't need to go through it again, but RDO fashion, we got our winter front cover on here. We got a beacon light, we got a block heater, we got fenders, we got fender extensions. Right, we got the Nokian snow tires on here. You know, we narrow ours up a little bit. These come at 72 inches wide. We narrow them up. We flip the dish and the sides on these on these uh, rear wheels, so they do track the same. 
you know, of course, we got the radio kit, our standard, you know, iPad mount, cell phone mount inside the cab. She's ready to go for you guys. Okay. So as we get to the back of this tractor, both of these are set up two, two different ways. Okay, obviously we got we got a bunch of weights here, and then we got a blade over there. So I'll just go through this one. This particular customer wanted just the front blower, didn't, didn't need the blade at this time. Doesn't mean we can't add it down the road. There's nothing that says we can't reconfigure this, right? So we have from our friends at Heavy Hitch, I believe it's Winona, Minnesota, if I'm not mistaken. Thumbs up to these guys. They make one heck of a product. Love their stuff. Go check them out. We've got 16 72 pounders on the back of this thing, right? We got to re we got to ballast. That's an important thing when it comes to tractors. We got to ballast them correctly. Otherwise, we get too light in the rear end if we have that blower in the front, you know, it becomes unstable, unsafe, okay? We don't want to upset anybody uh, in the OSHA world or, you know. <laughs> so, we got to be safe, guys. We got we got to be safe out there. So, we're going to ballast her with 16 72 pound weights from uh from Deer on on the heavy hitch on the heavy hitch bracket. Now, we also want to cushion this. It's a lot of weight. So, RDO fashion, we've got our rear accumulator kit tucked in there to cushion our weights going down the road. So then, as I mentioned uh, before, this tractor's got, uh, well, both on. They're both pretty much set up identically except the backs of them. Um, we've got the accumulator kit and the lowering speed control set. Now, it's going to be kind of hard to see when Kurt comes in to zoom in on this. There's a lot of business going on up here with hydraulics. So we got our accumulator right here. My finger's on it. Okay. Then back in here is our lowering speed control set. That's what's that 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 lowering speed control set. That's going to control that the rate of drop on that snowblower, right? We also got an additional valve with that lowering speed control set. And it's really hard to see, but it's a blue knob. You might have to get into it from underneath. It is a blue knob for additional control on, on feathering that, that blower down. But uh, these kits work honestly flawlessly. We Again, I this morning I put these tractors on online, or a little teaser of that one online, and uh, you guys were asking asking questions about it. And uh, you know, the thing is, this isn't our first rodeo with this particular setup. We're just now getting to it to put it on YouTube. So we've done this before. This has been a successful setup. Uh, we just really clean things up. We 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 tighten everything up, crossed our T's and dotted our I's on these ones. Uh, and then let's just we'll just go through uh, this particular tractor over here, which again, I, identically the same from from the rear axle all the way forward. It's identical to the tractor I just talked about. Okay, it's just when we get to the back, our friends up in Quebec at Metal Plus, and well. Ironically, uh, Chronovos is out of Quebec as well. So, Canadians, they know how to build some stuff, right? Just like the Americans. So, we got our Metal Plus EX4 Extend Max 712. So, we got a seven, seven foot as we're retracted, and then we can extend it out to 12 feet. Okay? <clears throat> and of course, you know, on this particular machine, we got our RDO exclusive accumulator to cushion that ride as we go down the road. And then on top of that, I want to come in here a little bit closer. I'm a huge fan of this. I put this on almost every single tractor that I build. Downforce kit. Okay, we got two cylinders here. And what we're doing is we're pulling down. We're pulling down on that rear three point And we're applying 500 pounds of additional pressure on our cutting edge. To get that scraping power for you guys. Works really good on Pronobo Cyclones. If you have that in the rear of the machine. It's going to work really well on this Metal Plus EX4 Extend Max as well. Quick note. For 2024 tractors that are coming out with that new EH hitch, Deere does not have a downforce kit yet. John Deere, if you're listening, please make one. I really, really like it. Please. Okay. They do not have it available yet. Your fourth and fifth lines, there are, you guys, dealerships out there, pay attention to when you're building these tractors. Your fourth and fifth line kits are different for my 2024. Um, God, there's a few things that are different. I think the EH third kit is different as well for you dealers out there. Um, please pay attention. 2024, they changed some stuff up in the back end of these tractors. Um, okay, you can still build them, but make sure you get the right kits. Otherwise, you're going to have your customer waiting even longer while you change out kits. And you're going to be wasting your shop time. 
So you might ask, why would you do a rear blade and a front bore, or you know, why do that, Alex? But purely based on, like I said before, everybody's got their own opinions on how they want to move snow. I'm just here to help you get the best equipment and build the tractor in the best way I know possible to make it work best for you. I my my ideal setup is having a snowblower and a blade on one machine, right, to go out and do your your snow removal, whether that's blade in the front, blade in the rear and snowboard vice versa okay i really do like this setup because you know a lot of people will say well i don't want to turn around and look backwards you know a whole lot like if you're backing up with your pronovo cyclone okay to that driveway and you're pulling out you're regardless you're going to be backing up throughout, throughout the night we just we're trying to limit how much we're turning around you know guys necks will hurt after you know 12 16 hours being in one of these tractors we try to make this as comfortable as we can and, and really as efficient as we can, right? If you guys got to be efficient. You want get, to get in, get out, and get, get the job done the best way that you can. And, you know, I think this is a really unique setup that I think is it's, it's gaining more traction in, in uh, the conversations happening more about a setup like this that I'm hearing about from my customers and out there in, you know, internet world. Um, so. Being that we're 12 foot wide, what I like about this is, you know, our typical snowfalls, again, you know, we're in Moorhead, Minnesota, Fargo, North Dakota, a, a typical snowfall event's like one to four inches, right? But a lot of guys have one or two inch triggers. So they're going to go out and move snow at, you know, 1,000 driveways, 1,500 driveways, you know, plus they have, you know, small commercial accounts or large commercial accounts as well. And so <clears throat> to help get that done faster, this is 12 feet. So on those one to five inch snowfalls, we can back up to the driveway, extend this thing out to 12 feet, drag it to the road, go back, grab another chunk at 12 foot wide, drag it to the road, turn around, straddle that straddle that snow line, and blow it in the boulevard with your front blower, go on to the next property, okay? Very versatile, or very fast, and then the versatility of this package is the fact that we have a front blower with a drop gate. So we do get those snow events that are you know, a foot plus. Well, I mean, yeah, you could drag a foot of snow with this, but not very far before it starts filling up over the edges, right? So we got, at that point, it's going to take us longer regardless to move a foot of snow than it is four inches of snow. So with that snowboard up front, we can blow our way into that driveway up to the garage door, drop the gate, and back up. You know, and blow that drift down. There's a lot of times the wind is nasty here in Fargo, Moore, or Fargo North Dakota, Moorhead, Minnesota area. I mean, we get tall drifts. I mean, as tall as the garage door. You know, what are you going to do with a cyclone to move that? You just got to kind of claw at it. Well, let's blow our way in with the PXPL, okay? Then we got a blade to take 12 foot at a time and clean out the mess to the road. I mean, I do like this setup, and I think you're going to see more and more of this particular rear blade front PXPL in more of the conversations that you're going to have with some of the professionals that you know in the industry. All right, guys, hopefully with, uh, with the door open here and uh, my lovely Kurt, my cameraman, uh, hopefully you guys can hear me with an engine running. So I'm just going to run you through the controls of how to do this, then we'll throw in some B-roll edit of, uh, of uh, how this works. So we're going to lift our snowboard by pulling back. And it's going to lift our snowboard. We're going to rotate the, the chute on the top of that snowboard. We got right and left controls here. Then we got our deflector on the top of that snowboard. Up and down. Okay. Now our drop gate. What are we going to do about our drop gate? Well, it's going to be right here. Okay. Since it's a since that gate is something that we don't necessarily need to control constantly, um, I went ahead and opted to put it off off the joystick. Right. Our main functions are going to be all right here with one hand, but that drop gate on the front of the snowboard is going to be down and back up. Okay. Then on the back, and bet you guys can probably guess this. Obviously, we got to lift our three point up so we can move our blade. Look, there's our three-point lever, and then our blade's going to be going to be in, and it's going to be out. So that's how we suck it in between seven foot and and twelve foot, anywhere in between. That's our controls. Oh, and then to turn our blower on. Remember, I said we've got a we've got a separate PTO switch. So obviously, this PTO switch is our factory rear PTO for gear, and then this is our front PTO. And there she just kicked on. The green lights on. Our Zyberg front blower is running. Let me kick her off. That's the controls on, on this machine. 
Um, obviously, there's there's other factory controls. Oh, downforce kit right there. You can hear the tractor kick down. Now we got 500 pounds of pressure on that blade. You can even see the blade move when I when I engage it. So, um, so that's 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 the controls of everything here. Um, your dealer can walk you through everything else, but so what I did on these machines on this machine is there's your downforce kit, there's your Zybird PTO, three point drop gate, rear metal plus CX4 extend max, and of course our snowboard lift, rotate, and deflection. All right, guys. So in closing, um, I hope you learned something today. I hope you think that these products are pretty cool and pretty uni unique like I do and a lot of us here at RDO do. Um, I, I encourage you to give us a call if you're interested in something like this. You have questions on your own setup. Give us a buzz here at RDO Moorhead. Again, Alex Mitchell. We have plenty of other team members within the company that know what they're doing as well. Uh, you know, we'd love to hear from you and, and help you out. Hit the like button. Smash that subscribe button. And thank you for watching.